The 1999 Winston Cup Series season is a memorable one for a plethora of reasons, but how differently would it have ended if it were under F1 standings? We'll find out soon enough, but before we get into it, let's give a breakdown at what the points format is in this era. For 1999, Formula 1 ran this point system, in which only the top 6 finishers of each race were scored points. This system was used mostly throughout the 1990s, and we'll be applying it to NASCAR in the 90s as well. We'll break down the season through quarters as usual, but with only 34 races being on the schedule, the way we break down the final two quarters will be a tad bit different. And now, let's get into it. He does not have the muscle at this point. <laughs> Mark Martin, 30th career Winston Cup victory. Jarrett second, Labonte, Burton. Then it's Mayfield, Skinner, Terry Labonte, and Bodine with Bobby Hamilton in a photo finish. Rusty Wallace behind them. Mark Martin wins the Duraloo Big Kmart 400. Do you yep. believe it? Had trouble here. Trouble! A big wreck. Kenny Irwin is involved. Jerry Nadeau is running right ahead of Jeff Burton is involved. And Jeff, I believe, is also, is he not? He it not looks like, I think, the Jeff, front of his car Jeff is all messed up. The 99 car, the right front tire is yes. going the wrong way. He's made contact with someone. Yes, he has. But the caution flag is out. Will it run 45 miles per hour? It's not going to make many more laps under caution. No, it's not at this speed. The rain continues to fall. And <laughs> Buddy Parrott and Jack Roush celebrate the beginning of the rain because they, of course, maintain the lead at this point. However, if we have to go back to racing, they are in big trouble because they've got a very badly damaged race car. Jerry, we got some official word. They are celebrating down here as the rain clouds open up, and Jeff Burton, you have won the 43rd Trans South 400. Congratulations. Nine races in, and four clear favorites are beginning to emerge. Jeff Burton currently holds the points lead over the Rainbow Warrior himself, Jeff Gordon, by just one point. Mark Martin is currently hanging in there in P3 with 28, while Dale Jarrett is also sitting one point behind him in fourth. One driver to not count out early on in the going, however, is Bobby Labonte. He got off to a horrible start in the first couple of races, but has since been able to get it completely turned around. <laughs> Now a half a lap to go. Terry Labonte, last year's winner, right in front of him. Well, he's going to do it. Here's the checkered flag. Dale Jarrett wins the Pontiac Excitement 400, his first win since Talladega of last year, 15 races ago. His 19th career win, third on his short track, and it's his second win at Richmond. He won in the fall of 1997, starting 23rd. Tonight, he started 21st and drove to victory lane. hard. Martin is trying everything he can to 
full even and past Jeff Gordon. He's got one last shot. He looked like he might try from the outside. Now he goes to the inside, but no, the car is sideways on him once again. And here comes Jeff Gordon to take the checkered flag and win the St. Mark Reagan 350 at Sears Point. His fourth road course win, second here at Sears Point. And the fourth win of 1999, he also won a Daytona, Atlanta, and California. He's going to go to our McDonald's winner's circle. By the time we reach the halfway point, a clear favorite still has yet to emerge. Sure, Jeff Gordon is in the points lead once again, but it's not as clear as in years past. Dale Jarrett is having one of the best seasons of his entire career, while Jeff Burton in the Ford camp is also on a similar route. Bobby Labonte and the Interstate Batteries Pontiac have taken the improvements they made in quarter one and have not looked back since. Quarter two progressively got better and better towards the end, while Mark Martin sits close back in fifth spot. Jarrett into turn number three for the final time. The crowd there standing and waving through the short shoot at the north end of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. A very popular driver takes the four through corner number four. He comes onto the main straightaway. And Dale Jarrett wins the Brickyard 400 for the second time. He wins in 1996 and again here in 1999. Ned Jarrett, his father, helped him through the races today, and Jarrett records his 22nd career victory and his fourth in 1999. The Brickyard 400 is his. For that record that we were talking about, we need for all of them to get back, I guess. Off of corner number 11. For the fifth consecutive time, Jeff Gordon wins on a road course. Three here at Watkins Glen, two at Sears Point. It's his fifth win of 1999, 47th career win. It comes in his 210th start. Bill Earnhardt with Jeff Gordon's enemy. Now is his friend as he tries to use the draft of Earnhardt to stay in front of Labonte and Stewart. But I don't think it's going to work. Labonte move up. Yes, now he's got that second spot. Here comes Tony Stewart to challenge Jeff Gordon. And Bobby Labonte will go to the bottom of the racetrack and take the lead from Dale Earnhardt. And Tony Stewart's going to try to go with it. The Joe Gibbs drivers are first and fourth. You can see that big check coming here. Three wins in 1999 at Dover. Both races at Pocono. Labonte now in turn number four. And the checkered flag waves. Bobby Labonte has his fourth win. 27 races in, and we now have three clear favorites beginning to emerge. Dale Jarrett and Jeff Gordon have practically been neck and neck for the entirety of quarter three, with Bobby Labonte not too far behind in third. All three only won one race apiece during this time span, and from the looks of it, this championship fight is going to go right down to the end with just these three. The final standings for the rest of the top ten are going to end like this. The Roush duo of Jeff Burton and Mark Martin are going to round out the top five, all while rookie sensation Tony Stewart came the first rookie in over a decade to win a Winston Cup Series race and finished sixth in the process, while Dell Sr. was not too far behind in seventh. The battle for eighth ended up being won by Rusty Wallace by just one point over Ward Burton, while Mike Skinner was able to round out the top ten. Now back to the top three, as far as the championship battle was concerned, there were some interesting developments. Crew Chief Ray Abraham left with just seven races to go in the season to form his own team. In his place would be new crew chief Brian Weitzel, who now inherited the championship winning Rainbow Warriors, and in his very first race, would not only win at Martinsville, but would take the points lead. And if that wasn't already good enough, the following week at Charlotte, the Rainbow Warriors once again won, giving Brian Weitzel his first two wins in his first two races. With many concerned about the championship at first, Jeff Gordon now goes into the final race at Atlanta with just a five-point cushion over Bobby Labonte, followed up by a seven-point cushion from Dale Jarrett. The 1999 Napa 500 was shaping up to be perhaps one of the greatest championship races in NASCAR history. 325 laps of racing to go. The crowd is on its feet as the green flag drops from the Napa 500.
stages, it was looking as if Dale Jarrett perhaps could come from P3 all the way to the championship. He started the race in 10th and had been running in the top 5 consistently, all while Bobby Labonte was on his comeback charge. He started in P37 and by lap 73 had worked his way to the top 5, all while Jeff Gordon was mediocre. He started in P16, but due to handling issues, he really couldn't get out of the midfield, all while in 1st and 2nd, both Dale Jarrett and Labonte are duking it out for the championship. Three laps, then Kevin LePage 17, other leaders have included Mark Martin, Michael Waltrip, Dave Marcus, Kyle Petty led a lap, and now Labonte. And now Labonte can use the entire racetrack, so he should pick up a little speed as Dale Jarrett gets alongside Steve Park, tries to take over the second spot, and does. Once Bobby Labonte got a hold of the lead at Atlanta in the late 90s, there was no looking back. He clearly had the best car, while Dale Jarrett was sitting solidly in second. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon never got a grips with the car, and with less than 200 laps to go, engine issues started showing up. Brian Weitzel had no answers. And Jeff Gordon drops to the bottom of the racetrack with smoke seen from the car. Bill Weber, what do you know? Uh, he's still talking to the crew, but he blew up. Mm. Wow. Billy, we talked about it earlier. He really needed a good run here today. He did not need this. With Jeff Gordon officially out of the running for the championship, the scenario moving forward was pretty simple. If Bobby Labonte won, he would be the champion. And if Dale Jarrett won, he would be the champion. Dale Jarrett ran a great race, but as it turns out, Bobby Labonte would run a flawless race, coming all the way back from 37th spot, leading 147 laps en route to winning the 1999 Winston Cup title. <laughs> Down to the line, with just about a fender advantage for second position, but the white flag is out and we are on the final lap of the season. Bottom of the line started 37th today. He is going to be going his second time that personal starter has won in 99. Jeff Gordon going to get Loudon in July of this year. Here is Labonte. Recording his fourth Atlanta win, his seventh top five in 14 races at this facility, and Jarrett took second from Mayfield. It is Bobby Labonte's fifth win of 1999, his 12th career victory, and it comes in his 224th start. The final tally for the top three saw Bobby Labonte edge out Jeff Gordon by five points for the championship, and Dale Jarrett by six. Bobby Labonte had just led the points for the first time all season. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.